morning everyone. Um, let's start with a learning review on saws. Uh, so in the workshop recently we've been looking at two different types, wood saws and metal saws. These are our two metal saws as probably you remember and these three are commonly saws that we use for cutting wood. If we start with the hack saws as part of our learning review do you remember what they're called? Okay now the clue that I used was a computer hacker uh, not very nice people are they um, but so that makes it a hacksaw okay this is a junior version of the hacksaw it is a junior hacksaw okay so very easy and that's our metal work vice okay moving on to our wood saws the common one that we use is this one and we have so much to learn in one lesson so this is a, you're right, a coping saw. Very sharp blade. Okay, so watch your fingers, don't touch your blade. This one is called a tenon saw. Uh, and it has a very stiff back on the top. So this one's aluminium, could be brass, it could be steel. But it makes for a very stiff blade. And that gives us a very straight cut. Okay, and the last one, is this big one at the front there. Uh, what's that? Do you remember? I'll give you a clue. That's right, it's a rip saw. Well done. And a rip saw is different from a cross cut saw, which we'll look at later. They look very, very similar. So a rip saw is for cutting down the grain of a piece of wood. And if you want to cut across the grain, that would be a cross cut saw. This one is a rip saw. You only need to remember that one for your worksheet. Okay, moving on now to blades. Uh, all these saws have teeth and they are quite sharp. Uh, particularly the coping saw, which we use a lot. Damn. Sorry about that folks. Okay, teeth are sharp, uh, so be aware of uh, when you see a new blade in a saw, uh, they are quite dangerous. Don't touch the blade. So this is a hacksaw blade for a hacksaw. And I don't know if you can see that, but just here there's a number 24 and a number 18. So I know that this saw, this saw blade, has 24 teeth per inch. And this one has 18 teeth per inch. So every inch, there are 18 teeth. Okay, if we were to measure them, that's what we would find. Uh, if we look at the rip saw, oh, stretch. These are quite big teeth. And on there, we have just 10 teeth per inch. TPI is 10. Okay. Uh, on the tenon saw, very similar. These are quite tall teeth. Oops, where's the electricity gone? So I need to speed up my presentation. Very sorry about that. So this one has 12 teeth per inch. And if I look on the blade, I should see there we go, uh, 12 teeth per inch, okay, so it's 300 millimeters long and it's got 12 teeth per inch, perfect, okay, another example, sir, for example, sir has only got four teeth per inch, can't cut a lot with that, So moving back to the saws, okay, this saw, the hack saw, is used for cutting metal in very straight lines, okay. This saw, the coping saw, is used for that curvy shape that we want to do, or circles in wood, uh, where we don't want a straight line. Um, very easy to break and try to remember that the teeth are pointing to you. So this is unusual 
in that this is one of the few saws that cut that way and don't cut that way. So all the others, oof, done it again. Uh, all the others cut forwards and then you relax returning, okay? Same as the rip saw, moving forwards, you cut with a forward stroke and then on the return you're relaxing. All of the saws, every single one, okay? You should be holding it with your index finger pointing. And that helps to relax the wrist and stops that movement. If you've got that movement, we tend not to cut in a straight line. So keep your finger straight, relaxed, and just let the saw do the work. Okay, same with every single saw. With the coping saw, before you use it, you need to check it. So often, these saws, okay, that because they're, we use the handle to do them up, sometimes the blades get twisted like that. Okay, so make sure these two pins on the side line up. Okay, and then the blade is nice and straight, and then just tighten the handle up. And that's it, you're away to go. Right, so today we've learnt, hopefully, the names of the saws. We've also looked at what they're used for. Are they used for cutting metal? Are they used for cutting wood? Does one of the saws cut in one direction only? Okay, and can you describe how to use them? Right, welcome back. Um, I've changed the workshop because the, the, the scroll saws are located in a different room. Okay, so you can see straight away, I've got my smock on. Uh, you guys will need an apron. Uh, any loose clothing, it's gonna off and out of the way. If you've got long hair like me, you need to tie it back, get it out of the way. Okay, and we all need safety glasses, so on they go. Get used to them, get comfortable with them, right? This is the scroll saw. Okay, so before you use it, just have a look. Anything in the way, move it out of the way, do a quick inspection. Okay, you're responsible for this. So once you've done your training, uh, you need to do your own risk assessment, read the assess risk assessments that are on the wall and make sure you're using it correctly. Okay, so there, there's your guard. Okay, again, that's a coping saw blade. All right, they are sharp. Um, and then when you're working, that guard comes down. Also underneath, uh, you can't see it from there, but we've got a dust extractor. Make sure that's turned on when you're using it. Okay, wood. So they don't cut trees. Um, they, they're designed for thin pieces of wood. This is MDF. This is six millimeters. Uh, this is plywood. This is five. So we're looking around about up to a maximum of six millimeters. You can cut with a scroll saw, no more than that. So on the machine itself, you've got a, an emergency cutoff switch. Um, if I just show you uh, on this other machine, there's your emergency. Just knock that, and it will uh, turn the machine off for you. So in the out position, see if it turns on. Good. And that's your off button again, or you hit the switch at the bottom. So when you're on. That's too quick. Just slow it down. Okay. We're looking for accuracy. Uh, and when you're feeding your wood in, okay, two hands, and then just gently press down and forward. Okay. Same principle as a coping saw. All right. Just gently. No smooth movements, okay? Um, so be gentle with it. Don't push the wood into the blade. Just take your time, all right? And then when you're finished, don't walk away with the machine moving. Turn it off. And that's it. So essentially, it's a coping saw blade that has a reciprocating motion that goes up and down.